Hello friends, welcome to my channel Know the Indian Law. So today let us have a discussion on the legal principles that are involved in execution of a will. Now uh, before we move on to discuss the law that is applicable on wills, it is very important that we understand the concept of succession under the Indian law. Now when a person uh, makes a will before his death, then we say that the person dies testate. Now when a person does not make a will before his death, we say that the person dies intestate. Now uh, with respect to matters relating to succession, there is no uniform law that is applicable in India. So different religions have different uh, provisions related to succession and inheritance of property. So for Buddhists, Jains, Sikhs and uh, Hindus, the Hindu Marriage Act of uh, 1956 is applicable. For uh, Muslims, the Muslim Law Protection Act or the Shariat Act of 1937 is made applicable. For Christians and other foreign nationals who are residing in India, the Indian Succession Act of 1925 is made applicable. And uh, the Indian Succession Act is also made applicable to inter-religion marriages which are registered under the Special Marriage uh, Act. Now the reason why uh, every religion in our country has its own laws related to succession is because of the constitutional protection guaranteed under Articles uh, 25 to 28 which ensures to each citizen of India the right to practice and follow a religion of his choice. So there are three major uh, areas of life uh, which is uh, predominantly governed by religion. The areas of marriage, divorce and inheritance of property are of core religious value and state interference in these areas of life is completely prohibited under these provisions of the constitution. So because of this prohibition, the state uh, cannot make uniform law that is applicable to persons across all religions in the matters of inheritance or uh, succession of properties. A will is a legal declaration made by a living person with respect to the property or assets that he owns and which will take effect or be enforceable in a court of law only after the death of the person making the will. So basically a will is a legal instrument which a person can make use of to control the manner and the person by whom his properties and assets will be administered even after his death. So before we look at the conditions which are required to be uh, present for a will to be enforceable under law, it is uh, important that we look at few uh, terminologies which are commonly used in relation to a will. Now the person who makes a will is called the testator. Now the person to whose benefit or the person to whom the property is intended to be transferred by the testator is known as the legatee. An executor is a person who is appointed under a will by the testator to execute a will. Now when the testator leaves this world, he wants some person to take the responsibility of transferring all the assets and uh, properties of the testator into the hands of the legatees as mentioned in the will. Now this transfer is made by the executor. The executor generally is a very well known and very trustworthy and loyal person uh, to the testator. And this person is given the responsibility of transferring all the assets of the testator uh, in accordance with the terms mentioned under the will. An administrator is a person appointed by the court under the authority of law for the purposes of executing a will or administration of properties of the testator. Now the difference between executor and administrator is that the executor is appointed by the testator under the will and the administrator is appointed by the court. 
now what happens in many circumstances is that the executor may not be in, in a position to execute a will because of his uh, death before executing a will or uh, the executor may in many circumstances just refuse to execute a will and uh, for many other reasons he may not be available uh, for execution of a will so in circumstances like these the legatees or legal heirs approach the court of law asking the court of law to appoint an administrator to take the place of the executor and administer the properties or execute the will now this person who is appointed by the court under the authority of the law is called an administrator now the importance of making a will lies in the fact that it would avoid a lot of future legal complications and avoid a lot of future legal disputes among the heirs of the deceased person now when a person does not make a will and leaves behind some property the law distributes all the property equally among his legal heirs so in many circumstances the deceased person may not uh, have an intention to equally distribute all his property among his legal heirs or he may want some other person uh, to take advantage of his property uh, for the reason that he may have taken good care of him compared to his own legal heirs so in instances like this it is very important for him to make a will in this regard and also for example a father may want his uh, widowed daughter or a physically challenged son to be supported by more resources compared to other legal heirs who are uh, physically normal and uh, well to do so in exceptional situations like these it is uh, even more important for a person to make a will and uh, in normal situations too it is extremely important to avoid future legal complications for a will to be valid and legally enforceable in a court of law it has to be made in accordance with the law now we say that a will is in accordance with the law when the will adheres to all the conditions laid down by the law now the law lays down four major conditions for a will to be valid and enforceable so the first condition that the law lays down is that the person who is making a will must be above the age of 18 years so the law presumes that a minor does not have the capacity to make a will and the minor does not have the capacity to understand the consequences of making a will the second condition that the law lays down is that the person making the will must be in a sound state of mind at the time of making the will now the third condition the law lays down is that the will that the testator makes must become operational or enforceable only after the death of the testator now what this condition means is that the properties that are envisaged under the will to be transferred to the legatee must take place only after the death of the testator so in the will if there is any term which uh, uh, envisages the transfer of property during the lifetime of the testator then such document will not be considered a will it will be considered a deed of transfer of property so the fourth condition that is uh, laid down under the law is that the testator can only transfer self acquired property in a will he cannot transfer property belonging to others or he cannot transfer an ancestral property under a will if a will contains clause related to transfer of an ancestral property then such will will be declared invalid by the courts so friends let us now look at some unique kinds of will which are executed by the testator only because of the reason that they are executed or uh, they are made under special circumstances so a privileged will is a will which not every person can make but only specific persons uh, are entitled under the law to make this kind of a will so the law states that every will has to be written down by the testator and has to be signed by a minimum of two witnesses and the law considers that a will 
which is made orally and uh, which is not written down will not be legally enforceable an exception to this law is privileged wills this exception is only made available to persons serving in armed forces of a country who may not have resources and facilities to make a will with respect to the distribution of their assets now concurrent wills are when uh, a person during his lifetime may have acquired properties in more than one country so in a situation like this it is better to make different uh, wills for the properties located in different countries considering uh, the law that is applicable on those wills uh, wherein the property has been located now residuary clause in a will is when a person making a will uh, includes a clause in his will which talks about distribution of properties and assets which may not be included in that will so for example a person after he makes a will may acquire additional properties before his death so these properties that are acquired after making a will and uh, the assets about which there is no clause in the will uh, regarding its distribution is taken care of by the residuary clause now a holograph will is a will written by the testator in his own hands and signed by at least two witnesses so let us now look at uh, the concept of revocation of a will now the law generally states that a will can be revoked by the testator at any point of time and also the law does not limit the number of wills a person may make in his lifetime however the law says that the last will that the testator has made before his death is the most valid will and the last will made by him will supersede all other wills that he has previously made so the number of wills a person can make is unlimited and there is no uh, condition laid down by the law with respect to the uh, number of wills a person can make in his lifetime the legal provisions related to succession certificate becomes relevant only when a person owns shares and uh, securities in a corporate body and that person does not make a will and passes away so in a situation like this when uh, there is no will made by a deceased person for the legal heirs to get the shares and securities transferred in their name it is necessary and mandatory under the law for them to approach the court and get a succession certificate so the succession certificate here basically recognizes the rights of the legal heirs to get the transfer of shares and securities in their name the law does not treat a nominee and a legatee on the same footing so many at times people get confused between the terms nominee and a legatee a nominee is not entitled to inherit the property or any benefit from the deceased a nominee only holds the property or an asset in trust for the benefit of actual legal heirs as named in the will so the nominee in general terms could be equated with the executor probate of a will is a order issued by a court recognizing the authority of an executor under a will to execute the will as per the terms mentioned in that will so in many circumstances what happens is that when the testator dies his legal heirs may object to some of the uh, clauses that are mentioned in the Uh, will with respect to distribution of assets of the testator and this may become an hurdle to the executor to execute the will so in circumstances like these the executor can apply for a court of law for grant of probate to allow him to execute the will as per the terms mentioned by the testator so friends thank you for watching my video if you like my video please do subscribe to my channel thank you